If you were anything like me in the early 1990s, then chances are you were blown away by Flashback, the quest for identity. You couldn't get enough of the incredible rotoscope animation, the gorgeous backgrounds, and the enthralling science fiction story. However, if you're anything like the friends I had at the time, then chances are you messed around at the first level for a couple of minutes and then quickly lost interest. Now is the time to turn away if you don't want to know what happens next, because today we're going to finally leave the jungle and explore Flashback's tragic conclusion. This is 23 Endings, The Early Years. Okay, so the year is 2140 and Conrad Hart has recently crash-landed his hover bike on Titan. He has no recollection of what happened, but finds a hollow cube containing a recorded message from himself telling the amnesiac to meet a friend in New Washington. This sets up a twisted neo-noir where he'll stop at nothing to piece his shattered memory back together. The first order of business is to explore the jungle and find enough credits to pay an old guy for an anti-gravity belt. Why? Because the only way to get to New Washington from here is to literally jump into a giant hole in the ground. Once there, Hart fights off a bunch of cops and discovers that his friend Ian has a special memory chair. You see, it turns out that Conrad had created a pair of sunglasses that can identify these shape-shifting aliens called Morphs that are secretly living amongst us. You know, just like they live with Keith David and Rowdy Roddy Piper. So now that he has his memories back, Hart realizes that he needs to return to Earth. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the money, so Ian suggests that he goes on a Running Mad-style game show called Death Tower. Of course, the problem is that he doesn't even have enough money to get the forged documents to get on the game show. So he sets out to do a bunch of boring odd jobs in order to fight to the death on television. What could possibly go wrong? Long story short, he wins Death Tower and travels back to Earth. But here's the thing, the forged documents only get him so far and the aliens quickly realize who he is. This takes him to the Paradise Club, which just so happens to double as a morph hideout. He spies through the ceiling vent and discovers a plan to conquer Earth within hours. That's not a lot of time, but at least Conrad knows the plan and can save the- Oh no! He falls through the vent and gets captured. Earth is doomed. Alright, so don't worry, Conrad is fine. He has an insanely easy time outsmarting the guards and escaping his cell, which leads to him finding a gun and killing a bunch of aliens. He investigates the alien prison in hopes of finding a way out, but instead comes across something even more useful. A teleporter that'll take him straight to the alien planet. Speaking of things that are convenient, Conrad discovers a journal from another human who had previously tried to stop the aliens. He laid out the planet's vulnerability, explained how he planned on blowing up the core, and even located a getaway vehicle. Unfortunately, this brave human died before completing his mission, but not before giving Conrad an automatic charge and the instructions he needs to blow up the planet. With this information in hand, he's able to destroy the core and escape to the hangar where he commandeers an alien spaceship. This is what happens next. That's my story, just the way I lived it. The galaxy I'm in today doesn't appear on any of our navigation charts. It's impossible for me to calculate my return trajectory. I'll probably drift in space for a very long time. What, you expected a happy ending? No way, this is yet another downbeat ending that leaves us on something of a cliffhanger. In fact, this is the second game in a row that's done that, and both of them start an action hero named Hart. What a strange coincidence. Downbeat or not, I kinda like the way this game concludes. Sure, it's a punch to the gut and isn't all that satisfying, but it does a good job of bringing Conrad full circle. He started the game alone and confused, and ends the game alone and confused. He may have his memories back, but what good are they now? 
you might as well just go into an extended hibernation and hope for a great sequel. Sadly, that's not what he got. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of 23 Endings, The Early Years. So here's the question of the day. Do you expect a happy ending when you play a video game? Personally, I like it when developers subvert my expectations. We've seen so many paint-by-numbers, hero-wins endings that it's nice to mix things up from time to time. I'm excited to hear your thoughts, so leave me a comment below. In other news, we're down to the final two episodes of 23 Endings. Come back tomorrow as we complete the Ninja Gaiden trilogy, and then on Monday, it's the final episode. What will it be? Click that subscribe button and find out. Well, click the subscribe button and wait a few days and then find out. You know what I mean. Until then.